This is the official Supercoach NRL podcast. Teams list Tuesday. Hello, Supercoaches, and welcome to our Live React Teams podcast. It is round 26. It is the Supercoach Grand Final this week. And of course, right on cue, we've got a whole bunch of injuries, suspensions, and restings to deal with. I'm actually probably the most stressed I've been about any show this year, <laughs> except for maybe round one, because there's going to be stuff happen this week. Yeah. We already know that probably 10 Storm players are going to be rested. There could be other restings. We just heard that AJ Brimson's out for the season. We've just heard Joseph Suali'i mm. picked up an injury. Tim Moody is here. Have you managed to avoid any of these dramas? Uh, well, I've got two Storm players. Biggest one I'm going to lose is Harry Grant. No one sucks. It's a hooker. It's main position. So probably just going to rely on Jaden Braley there. I've got two trades, but I think I might use them in uh, positions with a bit more upside. Yeah, I've got uh, Ellie Katoa there as well. Yeah. Chan might come in and play a role, but I probably don't want to yeah. play him. So. Yeah, I've got Chan as well. So he could be one yeah. of my back rowers because in the back row, we've got a crisis as well. Yeah. Katoa, as you mentioned, Curran, we're hoping he gets named, but it's not guaranteed. Fine is on the bye. Kai Pierce Paul got injured on the weekend mm. too. So it's tough there. It's tough at hooker. It's tough at halfback if you've got Cleary and Jerome Hughes, yeah. for example, who and looks no like trades. he's going to get yeah. rested. So it's going to be a tough week. Let's start with the restings at the Storm. So Eli Katoa, Harry Grant, Jerome Hughes, Ryan Pappenhausen, Cameron Munster. Looks like all of those guys won't play. Um, who do you think would be the best trade for Harry Grant? who is the guy who a lot of people mm. look to be selling this week, given that it's a tough position, particularly if you've got Apicorosau as well. Yeah, if I wanted to make that trade, uh, I'd probably just look at Little. Uh, he's yeah. just been pumping it out consistently. He's been flying under the radar for a long time. Only over the last couple of weeks, I think people have started to realise what he's doing. But he's getting it done week in, week out. So I feel like he's, you, the week you're buying, though, it'll probably drop off. But... <laughs> Yeah, you um, can't ignore those numbers he's putting out. Look, I'm a Dragons fan and I'm a massive Jacob Little fan. Mm. I have no idea what's going to happen next year when Damian Cook comes to the club because mm. can he really push out Jacob Little? I'm not sure. In terms of super coach, he's the best player at hooker recently yeah. other than Harry Grant. And Harry Grant's the guy you'd be selling. So I think that just makes absolute sense. And they'll be competing. No chance of resting or anything like that as well. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, breaking news coming through about an hour ago from David Riccio is that Nico Hines will be named not in the starting team. It will be on the extended bench. So he's got a lot of fitness tests to pass. And we will know on Friday, which is interesting because... Nathan Cleary plays on Friday, and yeah. he is a guy who a lot of people are looking to sell to Nico Hines just for a little grand final blast. It might be a very short window of time that we get the information. I'm not yeah. too sure. Usually it's 24-hour mail, I think. And, yeah. Um, yeah, Sharks play 24 hours after the Panthers. So I'm pretty keen on um, bringing Hines in just for the sort of – you know, mystery of it all and sort of bringing in a bloke that many won't be able to and has upside. I know you've sort of given me an earful in uh, <laughs> yeah, the green well, room about how <laughs> you don't think he's the guy. Let uh, me just put what I said to Tim off air before <laughs> was that I think that Nico could have a little bit of Cameron Munsters about him mm. in that it will take him a little while to get back into this season. I don't see him coming back in and absolutely killing it straight away. Yeah. might take a little bit of time. And let's not forget as well that the Sharks have been absolutely killing it without Nico Hines in the team. So there's the possibility he plays off the bench. Does he even play at all? Mm. I think it's a risky trade well, I'm definitely for a grand not sold. Final. I'm kind of keen on Matty Burton too, and I was keen last week before he put out... The 100, I think there's a lot of people were sort of talking me out of it with it not having the upside there, uh, which is potentially a fact. You know, maybe not the big, big ones, but the 100 was pretty solid from him last week. Teams are about to drop. Before they do, I quickly want to hear what your number one sneaky tactic is for the head-to-head -head grand finals. Yeah, so one of my old favourite tricks is just to try and get my projected score as low as possible, yeah. uh, just by bringing on my weakest squad, guys that probably aren't going to play, guys that are you know, no, either on a bye this week or injured, or just guys, yeah, to try and get that projected score really low, make it very hard for them to 
calculate where you're at and what you've got and what you're doing. But um, another simple one that I thought of this week would be just to, if your opponent is not really playing two eyes up and watching what you're doing already, you could bring in guys like Harry Grant and Jerome Hughes so they think you've got troubles there and then fits lure them into a false sense of security yeah and then trade them out to and the guys that you actually want to very um, nice or you can even just bring them back to the person that you've got actually as well too without having to go to someone else some so, great yeah. oh some great sneaky tactics there from the former champion of Supercoach. hadn't even thought of those myself I don't. Pl I tend to not play sneaky tactics mm. because you always have to set an alarm to change it and switch it back, and you know you do a late captaincy switch, and I always forget to change it back. And it, I think it's I've tricked myself up. more yeah. times than I've tricked my opponent and got caught out with it. So I'm a bit off it these days myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I might bring it out a little bit for the grand final this I week. I tend to agree, but before we get into the teams, I think that the number one tactic for this week is Keon Kaloa Matangi. Bring him in. If you're short in the back row, and a lot of people are with the injuries, I reckon he's a really good option. Playing lock, hopefully, for the Rabbitohs with Murray out. When he plays lock and Murray is out, he averages 85. So I think that's a good guy to bring in. Teams are in, and we'll go straight to the Storm because they're the one that everyone cares about. Hughes rested. We've got Hughes, Grant, Warbrick, Howarth, Nick Meany, Nelson Osafa Solomona, Josh King, Sean Ball, Ellie Katoa, Trent Liero, and Tui Kamakamika. So. So Munster's playing. Munster's still Pappenhausen's playing. playing. That's interesting, yeah. Well, at this point, they're named, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. that might still drop out, but. Well, that's good news for people who got on Munster recently. Um, Far Longo is on the wing, so he was a relatively popular buy. Munster stages makes a little bit of year. sense to me. I reckon that the Storm might want to get a bit more game games into him, a yeah. bit more confidence as well. He's been looking a little bit rusty, and interestingly, they've got Grant Anderson, the winger. I'm assuming playing mm. at halfback, which is a played one game I think crazy this year in halves for him too. On to anything else we can discuss there. Um, Tyrone Wishart's at hooker. So would he come into the halves? It's it's just a strange looking team. Joe Chan, who is a still a really popular guy, has been named to start in the back row, so he could fill a hole oh, for if a you're lot shot, of people. Yeah, he could be a, a blessing in disguise, couldn't he? I mean it depends what happens with Curran or um, Pierce Paul in the next little bit when we mm. will. But Joe Chan could be a a handy got anxiety waiting for finding out what the next ones are. All right, Cowboys, <laughs> we've got Jeremiah Nanai back, Tamalolo back on deck. So Ooh. not a great deal. Ooh, relevance. Oh, I own Tamalolo. You own <laughs> massive, Tamalolo. Well. Massive, especially if Karen's are not named. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the big thing there is do you whack the VC on Val Holmes? They're coming off the bye. Mm. They're coming up against a very understrength Storm team, even though they've got Pap and Munster in there. It's still, you know, it's almost a reserve-grade Storm team. It's the perfect vice captain for Tommy Turbo owners that want to lock him in as a captain. If you're a Tommy Turbo owner, you could also chuck a vice captain on him if you're a bit unsure against the doggies and mm. go elsewhere. I mean, there's so many options. I think this round's really exciting for captain. Uh, it's a really, the, the guy in first has really shot out, and I think it's just a real opportunity for other teams chasing him to sort of take a chance because there's no real standout option to me this week, I don't think. I don't know. What your thoughts on? No, You're pretty can't, confident, can't, Tommy, aren't you? No, I'm not confident this week. That's the thing. Up against the Dogs yeah. at Accor Stadium, I think it's a really tough matchup for him. Mm. But I've gone Tommy Turbo. When I've owned him, I've captained him every week this year. So am I going to change? If I was going <laughs> to do it, it would be this week with that yeah. matchup. But I, I still feel I just need to. Do you strong. want to have something on him though? I reckon if you're yeah, a Tommy you definitely owner, need, you need VC. Or captain I'd love there. to go VC on him on C on Tedesco, but unfortunately you can't. On to the doggies. So Josh Curran is there, which is fantastic news for Sanxis Paradise. I probably won't need to make a trade this week. He's been included on the bench. Um, so Stephen Crichton is obviously out with that suspension. So Carraz goes to centre, which is not ideal for Supercoach. I'll still have to play him anyway. And Skelton comes onto the wing. Mm -hmm. um, and then Jamin Salmon's in at lock for Kurt Mann, who's out with that fractured collarbone. What do you think about this side? 
Yeah, well, Matty well, Burton is the guy who everyone's getting on. Thoughts on him? I like it. You know what I mean? I, I was close to doing it last week. The thing I like about it, just feel safe and secure. Like, I feel like they're going to play every game. There's no chance of him resting next week, potentially. There's so many other sides. I'm trying to look at the scenarios. If that side wins, that side loses, blah, blah, blah. Could that side rest? And there are a lot of sides that could potentially know their spot, not improve, not go any worse. But dogs seem to be, I think, you're going to be... I don't, I don't think cracking. he's going to get rested. And you look at his recent average, his five-game average, he's actually the best fit um, half in Supercoach right mm. now, given that guys like Cleary... Such um, a Jerome buzz around the doggies week. too at the moment. So, yeah, yeah I kind of really and believe in Accor, them. Like, they haven't played at our core for quite a few weeks. Uh, they've been travelling around. Um, so I reckon it could be a big game for them at Aqua Stadium. At the Seagulls, they got Tommy Talau back... Um, which means Tolu Kula goes to the bench, which is an mm. interesting decision NRL-wise, but doesn't really have much supercoach relevance. They've got um, Ethan Bullimore, uh, Matt Lodge is back as well. Um, in terms of supercoach, DCE was the most popular, one of the most popular buyers last week. Stunk it up and then has a pretty tough run home mm. with the doggies this week and then Sharkies, Sharkies yeah. to finish. Yeah, tough one. I mean, hopefully for people who bought him, you know, he can repay them in coming weeks, but you really sort of want him to, you know, nail it against that uh, Tigers side. But uh, that game was what it was, I it guess. It was so strange because... Um, Basically, the Seagulls played short for the, almost the entire second half yeah. with all the disciplinary issues and sin bins, etc. So I'm not sure you can read too much into it. Um, I still think that, yeah, I mean, I was off DCE last week anyway, and I'm, yeah. I'm pretty happy I avoided it and kept the trade. At the Panthers, is there any resting there? Taruva He's back in. is in, and Alamotti is in, which means that Dane Laurie and Casey McLean are out. Yeah, Dane Laurie has so, been. I hate to sort of highlight p a players who struggle, but he's been making a lot of errors in his own end, particularly just mm. uh, just contact, just getting tackled and just popping out, and it's been really costly. So yeah, well, I mean, he's not a winger really. He's is been he? great he, in he's attack, more of a, though. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's more of a fullback or a, yeah. or a half. So he has been playing out of position. So they've brought in the specialist winger, the specialist centre. Interesting that Casey McLean is not there and he's still pretty popular in Supercoach. So you won't have that extra number this week. Plus a little bit brother, like don't want to get sucked into him though. Too. He's been, I I've, I've did not play him for when he played the Storm and got like 87 or something. Yeah. I played him at all the other weeks he got the 20s and yeah, yeah. it's been hard to navigate. It's been tough, but we won't have that extra number at the Rabbitohs. So Cameron Murray's at the judiciary tonight. They've got Cody Walker back as well. I just want to see if Keon Kaloma Tungy is at lock, and we don't know yet because Cameron Murray's still in the yeah. squad. As I said before, Kaloma Tungy is my pot of the week. Uh, averages 85 when he plays at lock, and Murray is not in the team, which you I think is maybe good. Coming up against Penrith might pull a little bit of that away. Certainly, it does yeah. a little bit, but still, I still think he's a, a great option this week and not particularly high in the most ownership um, stakes. On to the Eels. They've just got Luca Moretti returning to the squad in place of Jake Tungor. The issue there has been Dylan Brown for me. Five round <laughs> average, three round average of 43. Five round average isn't much better either. Well, I've actually had a chat with uh, Dylan Brown, um, similar with Tommy Turbo and the Manly side, just wanting yeah. to repay them for not sort of being on the field and performing or whatever. But yeah, with um, Brown just sort of wants to give about 200K back to yeah. my super coach team for not performing. It's been tough. I'd love it. And Blaze, Galvin. Blaze Talangi's fallen off the face of the earth as well, unfortunately. But he is going to you boys next year and I'm sure he'll be a massive factor there. On to the Dragons who have Fatala Mariner joining the bench again. I mean, that's probably going to get reversed on game day. Mm. Um, it depends whether they want to go with the utility on the bench or not. In terms of Supercoach, Jacob Little, very popular this week. I 
think he is the best replacement for Coruscant or Grant. Mm, I think it really makes sense. Like for me, I feel like probably I should do it. Maybe Brief Braley's just going to put out forties, and he can put out I don't know seventy to eighty. But I'm just worried if he comes back a little bit, maybe Braley can get to fifty, and he goes to sixty, and there's not really worth a trade. And yeah, you know, I think I'll probably attack elsewhere. Just depends on who you've got as your backup guy, I guess. The other guy who I really want and I probably won't be able to bring in is Zach Lomax. So obviously killing it in that centre wing position, which is a red hot position. Scored 73 on the weekend in a tough matchup against the Sharkies with no attacking stats. Mm. So look, imagine what he can do against the Eels and then it's another pretty good matchup in the last game as well against yeah. the Raiders. Yeah, I brought him in to, to try and win my uh, head-to-head final a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, had to sell Eero, which was just the way I had to oh, go man. about it. And yeah. It was sideways, but to try and win my head-to-head, which I lost. Um, yeah, but that's been painful, especially he looked so good last week, didn't he? Yeah, he does look good, that's for sure. On to the Dolphins. So, um, Mark, uh, look, we've got Cody Nicarima and Jesse Bromwich out. We knew that. TPJ is on the extended bench, so he could come in. And Jeremy Marshall King on the extended bench too, which could be a big factor for a popular supercoach player in Max Plath, who is or has been playing number nine and doing pretty well. Mm. You'd expect he returns to a middle forward role if JMK yeah. comes into that team. You reckon that Math- Max Plath still gets his minutes though in that side? You'd think so, yeah. Yep, mm. and then on to the Bronx. So, news coming through today is that Payne Haas is there, yeah, on the extended bench though. So, he's got a lot of fitness tests to pass. He's gone from being out for the season with that Liz Frank injury mm. to being named this week. There's still no Reese Walsh, as far as I know, so we can't count on him, but Payne Haas in the squad is moderately big super coach news if you've had to hold on yeah the broncos are like an interesting one i just wonder how much the storm rest players next week they feel like there's not really anyone that stands out but they feel like they've got a lot to play for and there might be some super coach points in there it's just hard to try and find who that guy'd be probably like a guy like stags who you can't trust in On to the Sharkies, so Nico Hines is definitely there. He is in jersey number 22. So, look, given that he's playing so late in the round, I think he's tough to get in. We'll know by 7.35pm on the Friday whether he's playing or not. Maybe if I'm Sydney, I I desperately want him. And there'll be a lot of other people that have held on to Cleary and sort of iron off Nico too. Maybe if you're unsure... You'd make that trade next week. I know you might be in a head-to-head situation where you want to win your grand final, and that might be your last trade. So in that case, you maybe do it. But if you oh, I think I might hold off. And I've got two trades. Make one trade elsewhere to try to strengthen up. And if Nico looks good enough for the final round, then bring him in. Yep. On to the Waz. So no RTS for them. He's still a pretty, pretty popular super coach player. Um, got cleaned up with that concussion on the weekend. Super coach wise, though, it's all about um, Adam Fanua Blake, really, who is the most popular prop in Super Coach. And it's his last game for the Warriors coming up against the club that he's going to be playing next year. Yeah, there's so a it's real... an interesting clash. Yeah, I really like those ones when they're going to the new yeah. club, sort of show them what they've got uh, coming over there next year. I reckon he'll score in this one. Yeah, he should go all right. And then we've got. Um, Mitch Barnett, who has not... But as soon as people brought him in, yeah. his form has dived off the face of the earth um, but still had that incredible run and was great for New South Wales in the Origin Series. Knights where the Titans. Bradman Best is back. That's a little bit of a shock. So that means Dylan Luke is back to the back row um, in place of Kai Pierce Paul. So Kai Pierce Paul is out, which is... A big blow. He's Good for in quite owners. a lot of super coach teams. It just strengthens up that back line, gives Ponga a bit more options to hit yeah. as well. So, yeah, I like that. The big question there is Greg Marju, very popular sell. Yeah. Only averaging 50 for the season. His 3RA and his 5RA are basically the same as, as well. I was hoping for some a lot of tries when Ponga came back into the Here's team. Here's why you but... don't sell Greg Marju this week. 
Yeah. So you, last week, the Roosters absolutely peppered the left side there. Like they went to Tupu yeah. side and had a lot of joy down that side. That's the same side that Marju plays on. So you'd think that Newcastle will try to replicate perhaps the joy they've had down there. Ponga loves the left side as yeah. well. I know he's been going a lot to um, Fletcher Sharp That's down sure. the right, but yeah. I've just got a good feeling it marries up that couple of meaties for um, Marju this weekend. Yeah, up against the Titans, it's a home game. They have to win to stay in touch with the eight if they yeah. even can. Um, so, look, I am playing Greg Marju in my 17 for sure. Certainly won't be selling. The guy who people are very keen on this week as a pod is Dane Gagai. Mm. Thoughts on him? Recent form has been sensational. And he's always a pod in Supercoach for some reason. Always kills it. Always finishes within the top sort of 10 of the centre wing position. But mm. he's never above sort of 5, 6, 7% ownership. The thing I like about it, he's always got pretty good base. So yeah. even if he doesn't have a blinder where he <clears throat> you know, he scores a try and maybe sets one up, you're still probably going to get a good 50, 60 decent score. Which is just, you, a lot of these senior wingers, if they don't nail it and they don't score the tries, like even Dom Young had one off a kick last week, but didn't see enough ball and, you know, low score there. So, yeah. On to the Titans. So they got Phil Sammy coming back in. AJ Brimson's out for the season. He's heading for groin surgery, which is big news NRL wise. In terms of super coach, David Fafita. Only 42 points on the weekend. Had to go mm. off. It was hot. It was blowing pretty yeah. badly. Yeah. Like, and the sideline commentator, Eloise Sawyer, said he is not injured. It is literally just the heat for David Fafita. Which he is, looks like the type not... of bloke that would get to him, though. You know what yeah. I mean? I, yeah. I, it would be hot up there. I'm sure I wouldn't last uh, even near as long as what he did. So. And on to the team he played, the Roosters. Hopefully no resting there. And... There's not, as far as I can tell. So Connor Watson and Brandon Smith are both back. Joseph Suali'i, um, I mentioned this just off air before, but he's done his neck, so I'm not sure how long he's out for. And Jared Warrior Hargraves has copped that suspension. So um, Michael Jennings comes into the centres. None of this is particularly super coach relevant, I'd say, and you can probably safely lock in Angus Crichton, who's the fourth most popular purchase this week. But do yeah. they rest people next week? Or well, even in this round, they play the last game of the round. Yeah, it's if, so risky. If the I'm go their way, do they rest Crichton or Tedesco or whoever it is? I feel Sam like Walker? these teams that are going to be in the top four, they really probably want to rest some players if they can. Just mm. get them, you know, a little bit fresher for week one. But a lot of them, if they're playing still like for a home final and that's on the line and they've got to get the win and the team below them, it might sort of force their hand to to play them. It's, it's hard to read, isn't it? It's a bit... Yeah. I'd love to sort of bring Roosters players in because, you know, they're, they're red hot. But at the same stage, because I think they're such a genuine threat to the competition, I feel like they're a chance to rest next week, even potentially if... It does affect maybe a home final thing. I don't know. Yeah, I think that Angus Crichton is a good guy to bring in for this week, but then you have to realise that he might get arrested next week. So if you're a head-to-head -head player in this grand final, mm. go for it. Leave it until pretty late, though, just in case there are some restings against the Raiders, who, pardon, <coughs> are unchanged, which is good news. And Joe Tapané is the guy we need to talk about because he's been absolutely mm. killing it. Um, the form front rower in Supercoach by five points per game. Yeah, yes, that's nice. I picked him up in replacement for Payne Haas. Um, did have one little sort of drop-off week there, but yeah, he's finding a little bit of attack there. There was the week that he played manly, had two try assists, and then last week that sort of, sort of flick ball inside, that was beautiful. So, yeah, I, then now that he's finding that, it's, it's good signs. He's looking good. And, of course, on the bye, we've got the Tigers. So that means Coruscant, Galvin, Finu, Samuel yeah, Finu. Thank God. I've been so sold. stressed watching Galvin after selling him about three oh. weeks ago. It's been such a headache. Well, I sold him for Cody Walker mid-season, and that did not work out mm. very well at all. 
questions till the end of the show. Um, with Rurea Hargraves out, would you play Terrell May over Ruben Cotter? So um, May is still on the bench. They got Spencer Lenu into the starting team. That still means more minutes for, it does. for May, but they've got Nafahu White's come onto the bench. Connor Watts. It's hard to tip when they're sort of going to give him more minutes. It's, they've got other players around and they might just sort of share it there and it could be a bit of a underwhelming He's, one. I'd probably trust more in Cotter to get... It's a tough decision because Cotter plays in the first game of the round. Yeah. Playing May would want would be a decision that I'd want to make late in the round. Yeah, but I'd, you can't I'd play do it because Cotter. Cotter's Cotter's. There, there's the a, it's a weaker storm side, and yeah, I'd, I'd, give, I'd definitely run him out. Um, there's someone saying just rest Tedesco and put Manu at fullback. I um, reckon that's a possibility for next week. Yeah. If they're going to just rest one person, they still think they oh, we could probably get the win still, and they're not decimating their whole side, but they're at least resting. The main guy. Kendall is asking Lomax or Dom Young last trade. Mm. I'd have to go Lomax. He Me won't too. get rested. They need to win. Uh, they're in eighth spot now, but they need to win to stay in the eight. I would have said Dom Young a couple of weeks ago, just I with reckon, more games in him. But just if it's only one game and he does get a rest. I just think Dom Young could get rested. So go with a guy who's no chance of getting rested in Zach mm. Lomax. Who got 70 odd last week without a try? Yeah. And you'd back him for a try in these, at least one in these last. Yeah, and he's playing the club. He's going to this week. Exactly. So that's yeah, one of those little uh, yeah. ones. Nice. Um, which player do you predict, predict will score the most points this week? It's going to be, it'll probably be a real random funny one. Yeah. And because I'm not confident on which captain to pick, it's probably going to be a random. Um, Centre winger. I might go something ridiculous. Not too ridiculous, but just because I've, I've got a f- backing what I said before. Maybe Marju for Marju. maybe two yep. or three tries. I like that. I hope that it happens. A big thanks to Tim Moody, the former champ of Supercoach. We'll be back for the Game Day Preview podcast on Thursday. We'll see you then.